Good to see you all this morning. <coughs> for you, Connie. Okay, thank you. <laughs> see, you're special. moment then you saw you from the moment he looked into your life there was something about you so you hear today he knew he knew you were once in a lifetime a treasure near impossible to find and he knows how blessed he is to have you in his life of March snow. Yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you said. <laughs> Surprisingly, it. Yeah. I was at the 60 uh, uh, something <laughs> the day before and snow this yesterday. I was at the drive in theater and I had to do an interview. I walked outdoors and saw the snow. I said, Darn it, Do Daniel, uh, Don, you predict this. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> Somebody asked me and said, What are you talking about when you say the Ides of March? And uh, you have to read your history to know, but Rome, um, when they were in power, the Ides of March was when Brutus stabbed uh, Caesar in the back and killed him and uh, changed the course of Rome forevermore. Um, so it's the, hopefully maybe it's the, we can do something today to change the course of of things forevermore and everybody always remember hopefully not that it's a stabbing but <laughs> but uh, remember this day just kill them winter yeah <laughs> kill them winter <laughs> there are some cookies here and some peanuts here if anybody wants any I told Patty I said just let's just start setting them out on the table and somebody else will eat them besides me that way <laughs> But uh, they are here if you want some. If you want some out there, um, <laughs> you just learn how to teleport. Yeah, that or imagine. Um, and I do have our uh, the savior of the day <laughs> and the sanitizer. Um, there is toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> Somebody needs to go there. I seen on Facebook where somebody written and said, "If you're going to visit my house." B Y O T D, and I thought, what is B Y O T D? And then down at the bottom said, bring your own toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I watched a little something with uh, Matthew Waters. I think his mm -hmm. name Waterworld. He put yeah. out something and said, what? Actually, what do I feel about the coronavirus? And what he said was. It is absolutely a, a, a disease. It, it is absolutely spreading. It is absolutely not as dangerous as people think it is, only for the elders and elders. Please be careful. Use your head. Um, there's no need of panicking if you get it. 
um, unless you've really got some underlying issues, you're going to make it through it and uh, just stop all the panic. And so I kind of I listened to the whole thing. It was maybe five minutes long, and it, it was very good. And I thought, you know, he hit it right on the nose. Mm -hmm. um, he said, if I get it, I get it, and I know I'm well enough to make it through it. So It's a generational thing. Yeah. Look at who it's hitting. Yeah. It's hitting those World War II baby boomers, okay, and ones that came yeah. afterwards. So now what's happening? In 9 to 11 months, the corona generation will start being born because that generation, yeah. it's, a, it's a transition <laughs> the corona into the generation. corona generation. <laughs> That's what's fixing to happen. You just pegged yeah. all the babies being... People Three all over. Months. Oh, I already posted that this morning. So People already all over, all over the world uh, yeah. staying inside and... You always find something to do. Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Go back so. to regular sports. <laughs> well, there's not even, yeah. yeah. There's none on TV. The original sports. <laughs> They're all canceled. And uh, it was uh, amazing to me. I, I told Patty, I said, that they're just not thinking uh, when it comes to, like, the NAA, NCAA, the NBA, the the start of baseball season everything's canceled and I said what I would do is if I if I were the commissioner of any of those is I would say I agree we need to not have mass gathering so we're not selling tickets the only ones in the baseball diamond or in the gymnasium are are those who are playing the games and that makes up 30 or 40 people and we're going to play the games and they're going to be on cable tv so yeah. and so and that's going to all you have to do is pay a little and you can watch the games mm -hmm. and make their money that way and the games go on but uh they're not as smart as i am i guess <laughs> <laughs> march madness has a new definition this year yeah <laughs> yes so Enjoy the peanuts, guys. Yeah. Oh gosh. That and donuts are my kryptonite. <laughs> I could sit here and eat this whole thing. Well. So you take a donut and stuff peanuts in it? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been um, we've been discussing Friday evening. We discussed uh, on that Friday evening session. We discussed superstitions. Let's go ahead and fill it up. And that way you won't have to keep going back. Go uh, <laughs> thank you. We discussed the uh, superstitions. And we got into a lot of them. I thought it was kind of not only interesting but fun to get into. because it was Friday the 13th and a lot of superstition around that and but we got into all of the religious superstitions and I was thinking about for a good while now I've been thinking about talking a little bit on the book of Genesis and those uh, four rivers that come out of Eden and kind of paint a different story for you. I sat down and I wrote some things over the years. And I've got a lot of the books. I didn't go through every book because a lot of books are mostly just all names and history. And, but then there are symbolic books like Genesis and Revelations. And, uh, of course, there's doctrinal or principled books like all of Paul's and Peter's and James and John's and that you can go into and rewrite them um, and take a good look at what it means for today rather than just sitting there and reading them reading a book so I, I did some of that and I've hid it because I put it away but some of this writing right now will be some of what I've got put away and someday I may bring it out and 
publish it, but right now I'm not. But I wanted to talk this morning on uh, fixing our eyes on Eden. And let me say that again, fixing our eyes on Eden, the Garden of Eden. And I wanted to read uh, Hebrews 12. And Paul was talking here, and he says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us fixing our eyes on Jesus. Paul was trying to fix their eyes, take them off of the Old Testament, Moses, the law, all the sacrifices, all, all those things. He was trying to get their eyes off that and look away from that and fix your eyes on Jesus. Well, today I, I, I put it a little, a little different. And I'll do like Jesus did, and I'm going to stop mid-term, and that is stop mid-scripture, the way he did Isaiah 61. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us and fix our eyes on Eden. Realize where we're at. Stephen Adabom made a statement. He said, you're waiting for God to manifest himself. Look around. Look around you and see men doing it all. Not God, not the devil. Manifestation is in sonship. Be it son of man, son of God, son of David. Even son of perdition. You said that can't be so. Hey, men are gods. And they create and manifest good and evil. The Spirit did all these things. So what we do is we get our eyes fixed on something besides what's going on. We interpret it as something else besides what's doing it. We miss the person and misinterpret the events. The person is real and the person is here and the person is us. Paul said up here, I think five times, one, two, three, four, five times he kept saying, let us, let us, let us. And he was trying to get the eyes off of all those Old Testament things and get them on them. Fix your eyes over here. Then Jesus was the most, uh, the most recent event, the greatest thing to happen, Acts the ninth chapter. I am Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest. So Paul was trying to fix all of their eyes on Jesus. And he goes on and says that. Fix your eyes upon Jesus and um, who, um, you know, for joy of, of uh, who he was, he, he endured the cross and took on such great contradiction. And he talks all about Jesus and how he was the focus of things for that day. And today, we're talking about us. About how the Spirit, once again, we're doing what Paul did. We're moving everybody's eyes away from the church ages, away from one man, William Branham, or George Pike, or whoever it might be. Um, it could be Junior Jackson. It could be uh, Ruddle. It could be Beedler. It could be could be Billy Graham, it could be uh, Joe Osteen, whoever it might be, whoever you are listening out there and whoever you listen to, take your eyes off of those things and fix your eyes on us. It's not one man any longer, it's us. So, Paul says that, Brother Stephen says that. Someone asked me a question and I read this Friday night and I just want to go through it very quickly again. Please, what about the spokesperson? If you're going to do this and you're going to shift the eyes, 
What about the spokesperson? The Spirit is dealing with the prophet among us. And so, I answered it like this. We have full trust and love in and towards one another, all of us. We're all transcending the old ways of the church and the ages. Some of us are still hung up in the ages way of doing things. There were seven patterns that kept repeating and repeating. It's, it's normal to get stuck in that. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm not, not scolding you, but now you're getting a chance sitting right here this morning. This is your first time to hear it. You're getting a chance to get out of that rut. So um, don't be stuck in those church ages, stuck on those men stuck on those doctrines and principles and all those things of the church ages get out of that and move over we have full power and trust and love towards one another we are all transcending the old ways of the church and its ages there are some men and women whom I would trust when seeking advice or understanding more so than others it is because I have worked with them for years and I have found their spirit and advice to be advanced among us. There are some people who can look at something and call it and give the best advice on it and they give better than others. That doesn't make them better than others, but anybody should have enough sense to know that uh, when you get good advice from somebody just because they're an elder, just because uh, they're not uh, somebody new in this, doesn't mean you don't listen to them. It means a lot to listen. These are those who have faithfully operated many gifts and offices among us. Men and women who are now stepping up to a higher level and transcending the old operations among the body in this movement. The old operations being, you know, we, have, we had uh, local assemblies, which there is absolutely nothing wrong uh, with gathering we're doing it right now there's some of us gathered here um, the term for this uh, gathering right here that we do every Sunday morning and and some nights of the week would be a local assembly that's what they would call it but it's not certainly not the same structure that it was um, and there you know there's <laughs> There's no deacons sitting in here. There's no trustees. There's no financial officers. There's no pastor sitting in here. There's no, there's, the offices are in our midst and are being used by all of us mm -hmm. through the Spirit of the Lord coming through us. Mm -hmm. And we minister and we bring forth the word and do all those things. But it's a different structure. It's shape shifted and it's moved among the people. And all of us have things to say and things to help and things to learn from one another. So it's men and women stepping up, going to a higher level, transcending the old operations among the body in this movement. I'm not talking about elitism or superiority, but wisdom. As I said, we are not trying to do away with the leadership qualities, but we are trying to open the gates and level the playing field for growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Growth in the movement, growth in the people, growth in the body, mm -hmm. through the spirit. We're all, we all have qualities of the spirit and exercising those qualities will help the new generations grow into this way of life. So we're doing these things and it's a great blessing to us as we make our changes and we're not trying to make you think that there's no leadership qualities among us because there is. There is every day, every moment. I wrote this, we must transcend the processes we have processes and things that we are going through. And as we go through a process, and you'll see what I mean in just a little while, we're going to go through a cycle. 
as we go through these processes, it, it is cycles. Like, like uh, for instance, I gave you the process of the resurrection. You know, you have the resurrection, the body change, the rapture, the wedding supper in the and in in the air in the spirit, and the tribulation period simultaneous. The then the millennial reign, then the white throne judgment, then new heaven, new earth, and then you, you drop right back in the cycle to the beginning again. Mm -hmm. You go through a death, a burial, resurrection, on and on and on. And you continue through that cycle. That cycle is not a linear thing that goes on out here one time and that's it. It's happening every single day in you. You're moving through the cycles you're moving through that cycle of resurrection. You remember the cycle of the seals or the cycle of the candles, I call it, because everything came out of the candles, came out of the church age. And there was the church ages and inside there was the seals and inside there was the trumpets and inside there was the, was the thunders and the vials and how each one of those take place in you as they open up in you and then you come right back and cycle back and hit it again and you keep going through that cycle time after time after time just exactly like the seasonal changes in the earth it's a cycle and you keep moving and you'll never find where that fall comes after winter it just doesn't do it winter comes after fall and you never find where spring comes after summer it just don't do it because it's a cycle and it keeps moving in a cycle through the spring and the summer and the fall and the winter and it cycles back spring summer fall and winter so we have cycles doing the same thing so we must transcend the processes when it comes a time for us to finish up one of those processes of a cycle that we're going through when it comes time to finish it finish it you say, but you know what? When I come out of this, it seems like I go back into something and, and it's, and it's uh, not as easy again. It's hard again. Or it's, uh, I'm learning new things again. Uh, one of the brothers that used to be in the assembly, you know, he, he, would, he would come to me complaining all the time about, you know, I can't do this job. They put me on the assembly line. I hold the assembly line up. I can't do this and I can't do that. And he constantly complained because he was trying to learn something new and his mind, he would get stuck on, oh no, this is horrible, this is a bad thing, I'm learning something new. I'm going to have to learn how to do this and do this and I just learned how to do this. But you have to leave that process and come back around. Every farmer understands that. Mm -hmm. He puts a seed into the ground, it comes forth, he waits patiently, it brings forth blades, it brings forth tassels, it brings forth stalks, it brings forth all those things, brings forth husk, and here comes the grain, and he goes through a harvest. He doesn't say, that's it, I got it made in life now, I'm finished, I went through the cycle. Huh. He comes right yeah. back, breaks that ground up, fallow ground, breaks it up, plows it down, plants his seed, and does it again. And some years, there's some some seasonals there's more storms than others there's more disaster than others and there's more blessings than others in some so it just depends as you go through the cycles so learn to transcend the processes when you've come to a finished product have enough spirit and sense in your mind to know that you're getting ready to do something else. You don't finish your product and then stay there. They did that in Moses' day. They died in the wilderness. They did that in the church ages. They died in the ages. You don't stop when you come to the finish. You start anew. Yes. And so I wrote this about it. Leaving the partials. Paul said leaving these things. Leaving the partials. Leaving the devils. And I don't mean running from devils. I mean get them out of your mind and realize you're not a devil and you're not dealing with devils. You're dealing with yourself. Leaving the demons. Leaving the gods. Put them away. Leaving the books. Leaving the word of 
other ages, leaving all the objects of what you want to worship, leaving the processes of immaturity, the gifts and the offices, all of these things transcending into the recognition of the person of Christ for this day. And all of those things that you came through are good and you learn great lessons, but don't die there. Come out of the valley of decision and keep moving on. Many good men die there. And their churches, their families, and everyone else has wonderful gifts and they do wonderful work and they do all those things, but nowhere is there any flow of the Spirit going on to catch further revelation in their lives because they stop and they die when they come to a finished product. Don't do that. Now, I wanted to read a little bit here in the book of Genesis, and then we'll, we'll read a couple of other things. But no, you don't believe in the Bible anymore. I know it. I think you're backslidden. <laughs> That's why I'm fumbling around. <laughs> and it, I have, uh, I have slid, but I've slid forward. <laughs> slid forward. Remember that old song? Who was it? Paul Simon sang, "Slip sliding mm -hmm. away." <laughs> Slip sliding away. The near your destination, the more you slip sliding away. That's what people think about you. In the book of Genesis, Genesis 2 and verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden. And there he placed the man with whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided into four rivers. The name of the first, Pishon. It flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. And the name of the second river is Gihon, it flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of that river is, and the name of the third river is Tigris. It flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. So that's your second scripture of the day I read your Hebrew and I want to read the way I read those scriptures I just read because I want to go through some things and help us out if you can't if you can't pick this Bible up and read it from an individual or from a form of humanity you're reading it wrong you're just reading a history book that's all you're doing so we see that Moses wrote about the beginning in Genesis 2 and 7 and the spirit formed man of the dust of the ground I read that to you breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man's being developed a living soul he now had character to begin his evolution. That's what I see when I read that. I see where that we took the dust of the universe and through our breath and through our life and through our thoughts and everything else because we're going to see a cycle of thoughts here in a minute. We had thought to pull together the dust 
and the particles of the universe and form it into this great ball called the earth and we are and were and always will be the spirit and we formed man in the dust of the ground so we took this ball and we formed a human being which was us and we projected ourselves into that human being and so then when we did that we breathed into his nostrils the breath of life or we put in him inside this body walking around on this big dust ball we put in him our very life of the spirit and when we put it in him now we have a man walking around in the earth Genesis 2 and 7 and this man it says he became a living soul you know what the word became means it means you had to go through a process mm -hmm. if I become a manager I've got to go through a process to become a manager if I become the president I got to go through a process of elections and everything else to become the president if you become a doctor you go through 8 to 12 years of schooling whatever it is man became a living soul so he began man is being developed once he took on the breath of life a man's being developed a living soul or he developed his character he developed who he was he began to he became a living soul he began to taste the water he began to do all kinds of things he began to look at the trees he began to pull the fruit from the trees he began to eat he developed a character and a living soul that said this earth is mine I am the caretaker of it and I'm going to take care of it it's, I'm going to I'm going to enjoy it and do all these things and man became a living soul he now had the character to begin an evolution Genesis 2 and 8 and the spirit planted or placed attributes and started a garden in the heart of man called Eden the spirit planted in a garden planted a garden east in Eden the spirit took this man and planted inside this man or this woman she was in him too planted inside them attributes all that was in the spirit he poured it out into man and gave them attributes it wasn't a natural garden of tomatoes and corn and green beans and things like that it was a garden it was a man and the spirit poured into this man into his heart into his being the spirit began to project himself into that being into that man and poured out and started a garden in the heart of man called Eden and there man began to develop form and take image in the world that he created develop form meaning he began to live in the earth he took on a form he began to you you'll read where that right after this he began to bring animals forth and he began to develop the animals and he brought the lions and he brought tigers and he brought the bears and he brought the monkeys and he brought the apes and he brought the cats and the dogs and he kept bringing animals forth man in his living being was bringing the attributes that were in him out every one of those attributes are in you that's why you love the animals that's why there are certain animals you love more than others because you have a nature of that animal more so than others and the man began to bring and develop form into the earth and he brought forth the fish and he brought forth he began to take on image and everything that he brought forth had a an image or a nature or a part of man in him in it the bear if you look at the paws and the and the lion if you if you look at the faces and and uh, some of them have the long faces which uh, no doubt uh, uh, Adam created them in Sagittarius and, and uh, you know and the Sagittarius has the more narrow face and the kind of long chins and everything else and and then uh, and then the you take the the tiger uh, the, the nice round face he probably created them in cancer 
because that's cancer. They have more of the round face and and uh, the big eyes and things the way those animals are. And everything was formed by the nature, and Adam was the man, the God of the earth, the leader, the gardener of all things, and he was taking care of it, and he took each thing and formed it and made it and created it and planted it in the earth. Everything from tomatoes to corn to, uh, to all these things that you see, squash and everything else, all those things, trees. Adam was bringing those things forth and creating them and putting them in the earth and made and developed and brought things forth into his world. So the spirit formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man's being developed a living soul. He now had character to begin his evolution. And the spirit planted or placed attributes and started a garden in the heart of man called Eden. And there man began to develop form and take image in the world that he created. Now I know that doesn't hardly read like this, but that's what happened. <laughs> Whether we want to believe it or not. Genesis 2 and 9. And out of humanity, remember what I read, began to grow every attribute. All the trees begin to grow. All the animals, everything begin to develop. And out of humanity, Adam, began to grow every attribute that was placed in him. It was all placed inside him. And how did he do that? Through his mind, through his thought, through his imagination. Adam had within him, he didn't necessarily call it a tiger. He didn't necessarily call it a tree. He didn't necessarily call it grass at the time. But he had in him all of these attributes. He didn't call it Tom or Jay or, or Cain or all those attributes were laying in him. And he began to develop those attributes and humanity began to grow every attribute that was placed in him. The pleasing ones to the eye. Just read it for yourself. Begin to grow the pleasing ones to the eye. It was good to the eye, it said. So Adam started out by developing the attributes that were pleasing to the eye. The beautiful things, you know, the trees, the skies, the birds, the, the flowers, the, all these beautiful things, the grass. The, he began to bring all these attributes out and bring them up. And as Adam began to bring these all up, the pleasing things to the eye, to the sight and good for growth understanding and evolution it was good for all those things it, and as Adam began to do that so life and its attributes began to grow life became bigger and bigger life became greater and greater when I say life it's the objects of those lives they kept appearing and growing and producing themselves and bringing forth for the seed was in them of their own kind. And Adam watched it as it grows. So life and the attributes begin to grow. And the first things were things from the tree of life that were good for the eye, good to see, enjoyable. You know, the fruit from the trees, the, the animals, the fur that hugs up against him, lays down at night and just enjoys himself and walks with him and flies with him and gets on the backs of the dinosaurs and flies on the, on the different ones and, and just enjoys himself with him and all of these animals and everything. And he's bringing them forth so we see that out of humanity begin to grow every attribute that was placed in him. They were first placed in him and he brought them out into the dust of the ground and the pleasing, it was the pleasing attributes to the eyes. There's, he had attributes in him that weren't pleasing to the eye. He had attributes in him that weren't, uh, 
that weren't exactly what you call pretty, weren't exactly what you call good. But starting out, he was bringing out all those things pleasing to the eye. That's what was going on in Genesis. And the tree of life also was coming out of him. His very spirit and being was flowing out of him. The tree of life also that were good to the eye. And then Genesis 2 and 10 and 11 and 12 and through there. And there was also the tree of knowledge in the garden of man. So man had in him a tree of life that was flowing out of him and producing everything that was good to the eye. There was no contrast. He walked in a world that was good to the eye and enjoyable to the eye and but there was a limit to it. There was no contrast. There was no holistic living there. And so also in man was the tree of the knowledge with the garden inside the garden of man, within the garden of man. Within Eden. Man is Eden. And within those attributes were unknown things of contrast, darkness, good and evil rested in there. Because out of every evil comes a good, whether you know it or not. Out of every evil comes a purpose, whether you know it or not. And all evil came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was planted in the mind of Adam and is planted inside you. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is your mind, your thoughts, your theophany, your thinking, and it is, it is something that had not developed anything except the good things. But it was in there. Iniquity, all the sin, the evil, the anger, the hatred, the jealousy. But nothing was dying yet. Nothing was getting angry yet. Nothing. Adam was going through this great, joyous utopia. You know, the utopia we all want to get back to. <laughs> we all want it to be. We cannot die. We will not argue. You cannot sin. You cannot do this. You can't. You cannot get mad. You cannot do these things. We need to get back to that utopia. Well, listen to me. It was in man, in his mind, both the utopia and the contrast. And because it's in our minds and in the spirit who brought the mind into the earth and put it in the human being and made it begin to grow, you know what's always going to be here? You're always going to have challenges. You're always going to have contrasts. I don't care if it's in this world, the world to come, or a million worlds from now, you're going to have some kind of contrast so you can grow. So there was the tree of knowledge within the garden of man, Eden. And within those attributes were unknown things of contrast, both good and evil. We're reading the second chapter of Genesis. These attributes were not yet developing in the heart and the mind of man. They weren't developed. Man was enjoying those things good for the sight to the eye. That's what Moses wrote down. That's what started out with man. He created all these things good for sight to the eye. And out of man, out of Eden, out of his garden, you're the gardener of this, Two and ten, this river flowed out of Eden. A river of humanity is what it is. A great river that flows out of Eden, flows out of man. And this river flowed out of Eden, humanity, to develop the garden in man. We've got a garden in here. And this river, what does rivers do? to any garden, develops it, nourishes it, makes it grow. We had this river flowing out of us to develop the garden in man, the attributes of humanity. And from there, from the heart of man, when the river came out and began to flow out, it says that it flowed and it divided, just read it, in this one and in this one, just read it, it divided into four rivers 
Now, you know we've talked about all the things in the earth. There's four corners in the earth. Mm -hmm. um, there's four seasons in the earth. There's four, the fours are just everywhere. I, I won't go into all that. But there's this four, 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 four. Everywhere you look, there's four horse riders. There's four life messengers. There's Everything is fours. And these river that came out of the heart of man and flowed out into the earth, out into out into man's body and out into the earth and all things that he had developed this was rivers coming from one it was the path of humanity that comes from the heart of man from the tree of life and this river is nourished by the river of life and divides into four parts going out now the first part. So so what have we got here? We've got a we've got a spirit, the spirit, that decided it wanted to develop its being. It wanted to develop its its very spirit and create itself into a living soul. It didn't even have a soul. It didn't have a character. It was Elohim all by itself no character no soul and then it decided it wanted to develop itself a living soul so it took the dust of his universe and we we are the spirit we are the it and we called it together and brought together a ball called the earth and when we brought this earth together in the east or in the earth in the beginning, all, all east means it's where the sun rises. In the east, or in the beginning, he took up some dust out of the earth, whirled it around in that spirit, created a body of man, and then projected his being into man. Projected his mind into man. And when he projected his mind into man, he began to take all of his attributes and project those into that man and he took that dust and he created the seeds he created the life forms he created the animals he created the fish he created everything and as he was creating and developing it it was a river of life Adam a river of life flowing out of him into the earth and creating all these things everything from animals to fish to, to the economy, to the plants, to children, to everything. It, was, it is flowing out of Adam. Now, then we come to the path of humanity. These four rivers from the tree of life, nourished by the river of life, divides out into four. Pishon. The word Pishon, or the name Pishon, means it flows out and surrounds all things Pishon it flows out and surrounds all things that is exactly what the spirit it is exactly what you did we began to create and flow out or give out or pour out like like William Branham said about Jesus he said the spirit poured himself out into Jesus and he poured all of himself into Jesus he said it wasn't like uh, vomit this, this is his own words in the unveiling of God he said not like vomit would pour out of your mouth but he said it was all of him his very being not a part of him all of him flowed out into Jesus well let me tell you when this earth was created, all of him flowed out into the earth. All of him flowed out and began to use Adam as the river of life to nourish the whole earth and take care of his garden. So Adam was the tree of life. Adam was the river of life. And inside the river of life lay the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because the river was flowing through it, that was going to develop too. Pishon, it flows and surrounds all things. It, it engulfs all things. It takes in all things. You are that way right now. Someone said, 
oh, that, that's not the will of God. That's the permissive will. That is such nonsense to make a statement like that. Hmm. There's only one will, and that's the will of the Lord, yeah. the will of the Spirit. Oh, that, that person's out of the Spirit. How? <laughs> you can't do it. The spirit itself, its mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this cycle, its mind was to constantly flow through the earth, through the man he created, and humanity was to become the river of life that was gonna feed the whole earth. All of its civilizations, all of its everything, humanity became the river of life. And inside that garden were trees of knowledge of good and evil and trees of life. And they were all laying inside this man. And you cannot ever get out of the flow. Oh, that group's out of the flow. Those people are out of the flow of the Spirit. When I hear people say that, I think to myself, how can that be? This, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> it can't happen. Uh, you know, somebody, uh, and I, let me say just a little example of an oxymoron. An oxymoron, you look at somebody and you say, to, I lean over to, to Daniel and I say, that person is pretty ugly. Mm. Well, is are they pretty or are they ugly? <laughs> they can't be pretty ugly. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. It can't happen. And saying that someone is out of the flow of the Spirit it's just a straight up oxymoron. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They are the river of life walking in the earth. They are the gardener. They are nourishing the earth, taking care of the earth, whether they're nourishing it with blood, guts, sweat, tears, or whether they're nourishing it with inventions and, and wars and whatever they're nourishing the earth with, they are nourishing the earth. So you can't get out of the flow of the Spirit. The flow of the Spirit is doing exactly what it wants to do. Can't get away from it. Pishon, the mind pouring itself out into the earth, never ends. It will not stop. First move in a cycle. Pishon, surrounding all things, said... I want to make an earth, nice big blue earth. I want to take a body out of the earth. Let my attributes flow into that body. Let it form into humanity and let humanity take over the earth and let my, my spirit and my process and my being and everything about me, let it flow through the earth continually all the time. Pish on. So we have the... Uh, the second river that we read here. And it's called Gion. G-I-H-O-N. Gion. Pishon to Gion. We're talking about a cycle. Pishon surrounds all things, brings together, and begins a form of life. And then Gion is one moving or flowing or going on. You don't stay still. Gion is a flow of things, and you move with that flow. Anything that gets stagnant, you know what will happen to it? That river is so strong, it will, it will take it right on down the river with it, and somewhere along the way, you'll, somebody will become the trash that gets wiped up on the banks, and, and all of that, uh, those elements go back to the earth and become something better. Nothing gets left behind. Everything gets taken with this river of life. Ezekiel seen it, and he said, every place this river of life moved, he said, every place it flowed, it came to life. Where's this river flowing? Throughout the entire earth. Every government you're looking at, every person you're looking at, everything you're looking at, every animal you're looking at, every fish, every... All the botany life, everything is in the flow of the earth and it is moving on and forming more bacteria, more life, more amoeba, more, more of everything. It's just developing itself and forming new species, new ways of life, new everything. It's forming it all the time. Scientists are looking at it under microscopes and they're saying this is going to become this and this is going to become that. This virus is going to be here, and this 
bacteria is going to take over here and just on and on and on this disease and and they see great things that are happening too great forms of life that are coming forth that will bring us more oxygen that will bring us more hydrogen and dioxides and everything else it's just moving it's a continual flow no element is left behind we'll find out that some elements might not be pretty they might not be perfect in some forms but they will not be left behind and they will form into something else taking on form that's what the gardener does he nourishes life to bring form so we have Gion one moving flowing going forward continuing on becoming more taking off one mask and putting on another the flow of humanity from Adam until now 6,000 years just in that part of humanity whatever the flow was in the spoken word down to the days of Adam whatever the flow was in theophany it's all civilizations it's all made up of elements it's all eternal and each one of them developed themselves from theophany and the spoken word into humanity and we're moving on and we'll continue to develop ourselves into more and more and more all the time so this cycle is starts out it's it's a it's a flow that surrounds all things or nourishes all things and brings it to life and then once it brings it to life it starts out in two blades I'm just using this as an example it's not gonna stay there Gihon makes it move on Gihon will take it to a stalk Gihon will take it to a tassel Gihon will take it on to to uh, a husk and into a seed and Gihon will move you into the next life and the next life and the next life Gihon will make you a baby it'll make you a adolescent it'll make you a teenager Gion will make you an adult Gion will make you make you a manager it Gion will make you a mother a father a brother a sister Gion the flow of the spirit continues to bring out the attributes in humanity in the garden that he planted here on the earth this garden of Eden you and me Gion constantly moves us then you come to the third cycle third uh, process in the cycle and that process and just like any other cycle this process is simultaneous mm -hmm. it's going on all the time <clears throat> and you may have all four of these things working in you at once you may have something over here that you're just starting to surround and you're just starting to make a move on it and you're thinking if I could just take this and move with this and go more places but over here you've already got something you moved on you have made it into what you want and you have surrounded it you've and and you've moved on and then you come to Tigris Tigris is a river that uh, flowed through Iraq and Iran and, and if you look at it on a natural map but if you look at the name Tigris why Moses used the name Tigris Tigris is a mythical place you say but brother Parnell you've been talking about the spirit surrounding all things you've been talking about uh, moving on and and taking what you created and surrounded and and kind of brought your flow into it and moving on in it and now you a mythical place what's this talking about well where is that spot in you that is a mythical place <laughs> it's imagination it is imagination of the heart of man Tigris River look look at what it does when it sees what it wants I just put it like this husband when you seen your wife and you surrounded her in all things and you had in your mind that this is my wife this is the one I'm gonna move on with her and we are going to build around this what begins to take place in you a mythical thing you see her 
at home with you. You see her at the movie with you. You see her in bed with you. You see her. You see her in all kinds of things. Mythical place called Tigris, but it is the place where all things form. Mm -hmm. Wife, you see your children before they ever come here. You see them. You love them. You think of your home. You think of your, your husband. You think of how great it will be. You think of growing up. Some of you think of many other different things. You may think of a, a business you may that, that you haven't even started yet. But the idea of surrounding uh, this, this, I think I'm going to do this over here. And your whole spirit kind of surrounds it, begins to bring it into form. And you begin to move on and you build this factory or you build this, this, uh, this technology and you keep moving in it and Tigris you begin to imagine all the things you can make I can make I can make erasers I can make cars I can make uh, automobile I can make planes I can make this I can make that it, Tigris the mythical place inside the spirit the imagination that begins to bring things into form not just move on them with a the spirit and say I'd kind of like to be that not just begin to build a little bit, but begin to take form in Tigris. The imagination begins to take form. We're talking about a cycle here. A move in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden has never gone anywhere. These four rivers are flowing in the Garden of Eden. They flowed in the Theophany realm. They flowed in the and that's why the theophany realm created a spoken word realm right. because python and gion and tigris and euphrates were flowing inside the theophany and then came the spoken word civilization and was a great civilization and moved throughout the earth and tigris and pishon and all these they were flowing inside the spoken word and that's why Adam one day in his imagination said, you know, we've got all good things here. We've got all perfect things here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got perfect babies. We've got perfect trees. We've got perfect this. We've got perfect that. We've got perfect minds. We've got perfect everything. But something in me says there's more. Mm -hmm. And Adam began to move in that mythical place, in that Tigris River. And that Tigris River began to nourish and flow in the ground of Adam, in the being of Adam. And Adam brought out of his ground his wife. And he brought out of his wife his children. And he done it in a different way than the other spoken word bodies did. Right. He done it in a way where he said, I'm not just going to have a bring a baby, uh, a, a person, not even a baby, but I'm not going to bring a person up out of the earth and call that my son and, and uh, then call her my wife and try to have a relationship like that. There's more than that. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, I'm going to take this relationship. I'm going to surround her. I'm going to put all, of, all that I am into her and I'm going to move forward in the flow of the Spirit and I'm going to imagine I can see what I could do with her. Imagination. And then Adam took that imagination in that mythical place and he began to talk to Eve and Moses called it a serpent, talking to Eve. It was Adam, the reason he called it a serpent is because it had a lot of wisdom. It had a, it had a new way into creation. It had a way into something that was totally unknown. The mythical place, that's what it'll usually do. It'll take you to the unknown. It'll take you to the dark side. It'll take you to the place where you say, I don't know what's going to happen here next, but I want to go there. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of it. And Adam took his imagination and took his wife and had a relationship with her sexual intercourse, something that had never happened through the theophany, through the spoken word. Adam entered into the Tigris River, nourished and developed that thing, made his move in love and relationship and planted the same seed that he had planted so many other places in symbolical form. He planted in his wife and brought it forth. 
Now you say, Brother Parnell, this means that all creation, all things here started in Adam. No, I'm just telling you about Adam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a spoken word civilization here long before Adam. Yep. I'm telling you about how we started and how Adam was our father and how Adam brought out these things through him. That spoken word civilization, they had sons and daughters and mothers and fathers and and everything else that lived throughout the earth for I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of years and on and on and on, but Adam developed the earth into a more personal relationship. And by doing that, he used this cycle that he saw in himself of Pishon, Gion, Tigris. He saw it happening all around him and Euphrates. He used his imagination. He laid with his wife in love and in relationship and he brought forth a brand new civilization, a brand new way of nourishing it, a brand new tree of attribute that was not there before. They were all walking in the tree of life, in the spoken word, in the theopony civilization and Adam brought out what was in him, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when Adam brought that out, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, another cycle of humanity began. This cycle, moving to the fourth river for just a moment so you'll see the cycle, Euphrates. Euphrates means the great river. It's a concept or it connotates that you start out in one river and you flow through four and it comes back to one. The great river. All of these become the great river. All of these are partial rivers moving through a process and then it becomes the great spirit. It becomes one again. Euphrates, the great river. And it means the ending. So we have a cycle here. It begins in Pishon <coughs> by the spirit surrounding what it wants to take over, surrounding what it wants to develop and form. Gihon, the spirit, moving into that and making a flow and beginning his process. Gihon is the processes. Tigris, the mythical place where that you use your imagination to make that thing come into reality, give it an image, give it a form, give it what you want, make it your husband, make it your wife, make it your business, make it your whatever it might be, your home, make it your your principles, your your guiding way. You can you, the mythical place, Tigris develops all things. It develops love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, kindness, goodness, faith. Faith, it develops all those things. It develops your character, your being. We're talking about the spirit becoming a living soul, becoming a character and taking on the earth. This is the cycle of humanity. Pishon, Gion, Tigris, Euphrates. The flow surrounds all things, begins to move and place processes into the flow, becomes the great imagination, a mythical place to form all things, and then moves it all back into the great river or makes it one again. And then the process is finished. It's completed. It's done. It's over. And you live in utopia forever, for eternal. I don't think so. I think, just like every other cycle, you go back to Pishon again. Yep. And you begin to form something else. And you go all the way through the cycle and it ends. And you form something else. And you go all the way through the cycle and it ends. And sometimes you may be forming 10, 15, 1,000 things all at one time. And all of them in a different cycle because you are a creator and you are able and have the ability to create more than one thing at a time. This is the cycle of humanity. And it is how we flow through our creation. Our place of abode, where we live, where we produce our life. 
is to bring out our attributes, all those things in us that we imagine ourselves to be. That's what an attribute is. An attribute comes out of the imagination. To bring out our attributes within us. It is the cycle of our thoughts. You're looking at, I'll just put it like this, you're looking at the mind of Christ. You're looking at the cycle that the mind of Christ uses continually in humanity to nourish the earth. This is the cycle of humanity and it's how we flow through the creation. Our place of abode to bring out our attributes within us. It is the cycle of our thoughts, our mind and its development. This is the framework of the mind of Christ. Fix your eyes on Eden. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What was Paul saying? Fix your mind on Eden. Jesus had in him Pishon and Gion and Tigris and Euphrates and he constantly used his imagination to develop a brand new world. A new world that brought together and mended and brought together spoken word and a sexual humanity world and he, he brought them together and took a body that was spoken word without sex and brought it through the sex realm mm -hmm. and created and brought them all together and made them one he had his theophany his mind he brought all three creations and made it into one being and we say oh my only Jesus could do that I beg your pardon we are doing that every day. We are walking in the Garden of Eden. We are Eden. And we are using our mind and thoughts. We're looking at everything. We're surrounding the things we want to develop in our life and make them form in us. And we are moving on it and we are imagining what we can do. Somebody right now somewhere in a laboratory across Israel wherever is imagining they're going to find it they're going to have it imagining a vaccination for coronavirus and this mythical place called tigers in that man's mind or that woman's mind is going to manifest itself yep. the same way they came up with a polio vaccination a fluenza vaccination a smallpox vaccination they are going to develop it because it is Christ on the move those doctors are doing exactly what they're supposed to do and that's Christ on the move. I don't just look at us as Christ. I look at the governments as Christ. I look at all things as Christ. If you believe Revelations 11 and 15, you have to believe the kingdom of our Lord, the Christ, has taken over all things. So I'm watching them and I know that those four things are developing in somebody's mind and they're going to kill this coronavirus. They're going to come up with a vaccination for it. I trust that with all my heart. And I trust while that is going on that I have the stamina of faith and love and purity, mind and heart and a strong body that if I get it, so what? I'm going to go through three or four bad days of sickness and I'm going to come out of it just like I came out of the cancer, just like I came out of the cranial stroke, just like I came out of the flu, just like I came out of anything else. I'm going to come out of it and I'm going to be better for it. Mm -hmm. You have to have this cycle in you moving and recognize it. It is a flow into the earth. All of us have it. The more you recognize it, the more you will use it the more it will develop in your life. This is the framework of the mind of Christ. How can you say that, Brother Parnell? You said it has beginnings and endings and it has... Let's go read just a second. I am the Alpha and Omega. Oh, that would be the beginning and the ending. The beginning and the end. For those of you that don't know what Alpha and Omega means in the, in the Greek, it means the beginning and the end. I am the beginning and the end. The first and the last, in case you don't know what beginning and end is. I continually pass from death unto life. He that believeth in me shall never die. I continually pass from death unto life. And I'm alive forevermore. 
Although I come through the cycle of Pishon to Gihon to Tigris to Euphrates and there's an ending to that process, I'm alive forevermore. I come right back around from the finish, I hit the beginning and I just keep right on moving and moving and moving and learning the processes, becoming more and more and more because I am the eternal being that projects himself into Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and I am more alive every time I go through a process. Right. I'm not more dead, I'm more alive. We have to realize this. Stop thinking of this path of the human mind. Stop thinking of this path for humanity as a sinful walk. That's nonsense. This is not a sinful walk. Stop thinking of it as unworthy. We're not good enough here. We're not, we're not smart enough here. We're not, we don't have enough spirit here. We, don't, we, we do things wrong here. We cause problems here. We do this, we do that. This is all a part of this flow. It's all a part of the mind of Christ. He says this is a track of darkness. We moved into darkness and oh, we're trying to transcend into the light. Have you never read your scripture that you say you believe in in Colossians where he said we have already transcended into the kingdom of his dear son? We're in the light. We were in the darkness when we were in theophany. Didn't know exactly who we were, what we are, who, what, who we loved, what our development was, what was in. You talk about darkness. We was in darkness. <coughs> but now, we've transcended into the kingdom of his dear son. Are we understanding it? Yes, very clear. Stop thinking of this as a track of darkness. Many have said it, a walk away from the Spirit. We walked away from the Spirit. We fell. We turned our back on the Spirit. We did not. We are the Spirit who stepped our foot into this river of life. We put our foot in it. We went in up to our knees. We went up to our waist. We went in up to our chest. And we went under and we're swimming in it. And we love it. It's the Spirit of life. And getting into these depths is the only way you continue to flow and come through the rivers and put on a mythical mind and imagination that you can form things and make them great beginnings and endings in your life and develop a person over a period of time. Develop a real soul over a period of time. So we see this. We call it a walk away from the spirit. I call it a spirit walking into the elements and enjoying every bit of it. Mm -hmm. This cycle of Eden is a walk into the depths of flesh. A walk into the depths of the earth. A walk into the depths. This spirit wanted to develop itself and know his, his body. Understand his body. The earth is the body of of the spirit Eden has never left us nor have we ever left Eden it did not happen it is our very character our makeup our path of life to understand our growth and we couldn't do that without creating these things and projecting ourselves into them Understanding our growth and understanding the trees within us. Manifestation is Eden. I read to you what Brother Stephen Adabom said. Men are gods. We create good and we create evil. We do all these things. Manifestation is Eden. Manifestation is Pishon, Gihon, Tigris, and Euphrates. Bringing thought into word and down into deed and walking around in the earth. We've never left Eden. Manifestation is Eden. Entering this consciousness of flesh is Eden. We never 
experience Eden in the theophany. We never experience Eden in the spoken word. We experience Eden when we stepped into humanity because it became holistic. Mm -hmm. Here we are now. I'm going to start on the other side. Fix your eyes on Eden. I'm not saying fix your eyes on the good things. I'm not saying fix your eyes on utopia. I'm not saying fix your eyes on a tree that never dies, on a, on a bird that flies and, and is never grounded, on a, a man that never grows old, on a family that's always perfect. No, that's not Eden. Fix your eyes. Know your cycles. Know your patterns. Know the pattern of the resurrection, the cycle you're going through. Know the pattern of the candles, the cycle you go through. Know the pattern of of the progression of the mind from theophany into into spoken word into into uh, spiritual mind know the pattern that you know those patterns and know this pattern that we're talking about today fix your eyes on your cycles and on your patterns on your types and on your shadows Walk in this cycle of life and use it every day. You did not leave Eden. You are still in Eden. And you are nourishing from these great rivers. The processes are still here. And the cycle of Eden is flowing and flowing heavily in the heart of humanity right now. It's in us. We have not left it. We are not going to return to it. We are it. Yes. We are Eden. We are the Spirit. Pishon. We are a river of life surrounding all things in the midst. Our mind needs to think that way. This walk is surrounded by the tree of life and the river of life nourishing us, waking us up, developing us in every way. Always know that you are the being projecting all things. You are the one in the midst surrounding all things. It's you. It's not you and then a spirit somewhere doing it and you saying, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you here. Thank you. It's you. You are Pishon. You are the spirit. You are the thought that came forth to surround what is yours. I don't surround what's Moses. I don't surround what was Paul's or Peter's. I surround everything that's mine and I develop it and I make it mine going through the processes of this cycle. This walk is surrounded by the tree of life and the river of life is nourishing us, waking us, developing us in every way. Always know that you are the being projecting all of these things. You're the one in the midst. Gihon, we're moving through this cycle of life as one. Daniel's got his different walk. Alan's got his different walk. Connie has her. Patty has hers. Joe Gomez has his. Louis Vilmore has his. Richie Love has his. Judas had his. Balaam had his. Corin Dathan had theirs. All of it from the river of life. Everything from the river of life. All the way through. Jacob in all of his sinistry, straight from the river of life. Abraham in all of his lies, deceivings, giving away his wife, all from the river of life. Judas in all of his betrayal, in all of his hurt, and everything that he'd done straight from the river of life. Exactly nourished by the river of life in his mythical world of Tigris. Judas thought that if he, if he turned Jesus over to the Romans, only one thing could happen. And that would be the mighty power of Jesus would come out and he would conquer the Romans destroy them, cast them out of the land, set Israel up as the 12 tribes, and have the whole world paying dividends into Israel, and they would all sit on thrones. A mythical, 
Tigris took Judas to his reality. Mm -hmm. And Euphrates brought it to an ending. And he moved back through another cycle. I'm sure Judas doesn't feel today like he felt then. <laughs> so we move through these cycles. Gion, we are moving through this cycle of life as one. Judas did that. And what he did was a part of me. <coughs> you think you've never betrayed the Lord? <laughs> I'll laugh at you. We constantly betray because it's in us. It's in our it's, nature. It's, in our nature. It's, it's a nourishment of life. Mm -hmm. It's the way we nourish the contrast. Mm -hmm. Adam chose to take on another way of walk and it brought out the attribute of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The good things to the eye were first. And they all loved it so much, but then they moved on. And they began to bring out other things. We move on from the beginning to the ending. We cycle time and time and time again. Just keep cycling through it. Coming from beginnings to endings to beginnings to endings. And sometimes we cycle through 20 different paths at the same time creating beginnings and endings all the time moving from beginnings to endings and back again for yet another cycle of Eden all the way through Euphrates look at Euphrates what is Euphrates it's the apocalypse Euphrates when you look the word Euphrates up it's, be, it's the ending a great river the ending and it goes on and it says it, it is the it uncovers Euphrates uncovers, Euphrates unveils, Euphrates, Euphrates is the apocalypse, it's the revealer of all things. When you get to Euphrates, when you come through Pishon, Gihon, and Tigris, when you get to Euphrates, it reveals the process. Up comes the tree, out comes the child, here comes the marriage, there goes the manager. The Euphrates reveals and finishes the process it's the apocalypse of all things it brings out and reveals all things so here we are what was Euphrates in the book of Revelations it was the final river Babylon was built on and Euphrates is done what happens in Euphrates it dries up or it comes to its ending and you move back around and you come back through all of that process you hit Euphrates and the apocalypse is revealed in your life, something else happens, and it dries up, and you come right back again. Euphrates is the ending river that sends you back through the cycle again. Gihon keeps you moving from beginning to end and back again for yet another cycle. Eden is the thought. Right here's Eden. Eden was placed in us, or the mind of Christ was placed in us and we first wanted to see what it looked like to have good things in the earth and we developed those good things and we tasted of those good things eating is the thought the word and the manifestation are humanity that comes out of the thought eating is eternal Oh, Brother Parnell, I thought we left. Eden is eternal. You can't leave Eden. Eden is eternal with limitless beginnings and endings. What we do is we take sections of Eden and begin and end it. That's not, that doesn't take away from eternity. Eternity is still here. Eternity is the beginning and the end eternity has beginnings and endings in it because we have the mind and the framework and the cycle of the mind of Christ to place beginnings and endings all over the place in our lives Tigris the mythical place the imagination of humanity my goodness think about humanity all just look from just say from from World War II, World War One, from 1911 until now, 100 years. Look at what's come out of Tigris. 
look at the developments. We've gone to the moon. We've developed all kinds of war weapons. We've developed all kinds of vaccines. We've developed all kinds of inventions that help us make things better, make things easier. We've developed seeds that that we can feed the whole earth now. We can feed everyone. We can we don't have to worry about famines and things like that. Now what we need is a humanity that has enough heart to take care of those things. Yes. We've got it here. We've developed so many things. And now it's time for us to start changing our hearts, changing our thoughts, changing ourselves from, from all of those developments into making this complete and having a place where the things still are. And we still have the total contrast. That tree out there is getting old. It'll never die. You say, Brother Parnell, the leaves will leave it. Where's it going? It's, it's, where do the leaves that fall off that tree go? Do you think those leaves die? No, they go back into the earth. They become other elements. They come back up in the tree the next year. Or a dog, uh, it, it, they walk off in a, in a cow that ate them or whatever. And they, they become more and more and more things. All the, Nothing dies. We're already in Eden. We got this picture that everything dies. Everything goes away. Everything's death. We've moved beyond death if you can fix your eyes on Eden these are processes in Eden in our mind in the mind of Christ that we are going through a mythical place the imagination of humanity the dreams of the mind and heart that bring on creation what we can imagine in a real world what we can imagine in a real world is mythical until we bring it into fruition. This is the thought. Your imagination. But what is real is what you take out of that mythical world and bring it into manifestation. Trees, grass, love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, kindness, goodness, faith, hate, anger, jealousy, envy, strife. All these things are real because we're bringing them out of our mythical place, our little spot in that mind of Christ called the imagination. What we can imagine in a real world is mythical until we bring it into fruition. Here in the process, the cycle of Tigris is where we accomplish these things. We take the things that we want and begin to develop them. Tiger starts with nothing. Absolutely nothing. How did the spirit start? He took nothing and made something out of it. Tiger starts in nothing. You are the spirit. And you start out with nothing. Think of yourself as spirit world all the way back in the theophany with all the attributes that you've held in you from millions of years ago even up until now and think of yourself as starting out as nothing and what all you have accomplished right now what all you've come through right now think of yourself as a little baby this is a this is a little iPod of it you're just a little baby with nothing no mind no nothing and then you began from nothing to develop the elements, develop the brain, develop the body, develop everything into what you want to be. The cycle of tigers is where we accomplish these things. Tiger starts with nothing and builds kingdoms, hopes, faith, growth, endurance. Out of the imagination comes all of these things. Tigris builds it. This part of the cycle sets the mind in motion to grow into manifestation and become the river of life that flows and nourishes humanity. That's what it does. Euphrates, the great river, the ending, the apocalypse, the revealing, the exposing. This nourishment of humanity 
finishes things, completes things, exposes and reveals things, it unseals things, it opens up all things that enter its final cycle. A husband and wife, they say, you know what, we want, we want a child. And they get together and they have their time together. And the mother is carrying the seed in the womb in total darkness that you can't see. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it's going to develop into. You have absolutely no idea. Tigress takes something, to, it takes nothing and makes something out of it. Neither one of you had a thing. Now you've got a little baby growing in a womb. And nine months later, what you did exposes itself. It unveils itself. It unseals itself. It breaks the seal. It breaks the matrix. It pushes out the water and the blood. Out comes the body. The spirit enters the body and projects itself. And there is the thing that you started out in Pishon with, went to Gihon and made your move, and in your imagination, and in that, and sometimes you get pretty imaginable in, in, your, in your sex, <laughs> and in your imagination you create that baby, and nine months later it comes out and you say, oh my God, what a beautiful thing, and Euphrates exposes it, and you know what happens? Boom, you go right back to Pishon, and you begin to try to develop this thing. You begin to try to work with this little baby, this little girl, this little boy. You begin to put into them imagination and love and peace and faith. And you do your best to take what you created and take it through the same framework, the mind of Christ, to give it the beginnings and endings that it needs all the way through this life. Exposes, reveals, unseals opens all things that enter its final cycle before cycling back again into Pishon. The Euphrates is the great river of Babylon, the river of the apocalypse. Here is where we all unveil all things about ourselves. The manifestation and then recycles us into another beginning. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I was dead and I'm alive forevermore. Euphrates is not the end of humanity as much as they'd love to say so. Oh, it, the Euphrates is going to dry up and there's going to be horsemen from all over the world and they're going to destroy the world and we're going to go into Armageddon and Armageddon is going to wipe the earth clean and totally uh, wipe it off and we'll come back in the millennium and, and then we'll do it again. In Gog and Magog, we'll, we'll kill them all again and destroy everything again. No. <clears throat> Euphrates is not the end of humanity. Euphrates is the end of the cycle of the mind of Christ and takes you back to the beginning of the cycle again. Euphrates is not the end of humanity. It is the end of a cycle within humanity, within Eden, within the human mind. So we're not looking for this great eternal world to end. But we are looking for greater processes to come. We are looking for greater beginnings to happen. We are looking for many of the old ways to end and go out of our way. And we are looking for nourishment, rivers of life, and trees of life and trees of knowledge of good and evil trees to grow and form and develop us into a holistic being Genesis 2 and 15 now we've got the process now we got the mind work now we understand what's happening to us as we go through these processes now we have a holistic being. Now I understand myself as good and evil. I understand myself as God and Satan. I understand myself as all of these processes. I'm all of them. Genesis 2 and 15. 
Then the Spirit blessed humanity and its garden of attributes. And the mind of man began to cultivate it and keep it. We became a gardener of our thoughts, our world, and our development. That's Genesis 2 and 15. It's not that the Lord took a man, put him in a garden, and said, there, now dress the tomatoes and the corn, take care of it, and I'll be happy with you. It is that the Spirit blessed humanity or blessed all of the attributes. And in that garden or in that mind, in that framework, he put his very mind, Christ, and began to bring all the attributes out by the imagination, by the memory, by, the, by all of those things, see, taste, feel, smell, and hear, all of our senses, he began to bring out Memory, reason, conscience, imagination, affections, love, emotion. Begin to bring out all these things. Humanity and its garden of attributes begin to develop. And the mind of man began to cultivate it and keep it. We become a gardener of our thoughts, our world, and our development. We are in the middle of evolution. We are in the middle of the mind of Christ. We are in the middle of all these beginnings and endings. Good morning, gardener. <laughs> what are you producing? What are you developing? What world are you thinking about? What attributes do you want to bring out? What is laying in your mythical place that's saying, I want this, or I want this? or this is what I need. What's going on in your mind right now? Can you see yourself as the Spirit moving into the creation, moving it forward and building it, imagining and putting your thoughts into it and developing and nourishing the earth and your body and your very being and attributes, and then coming back to the great river, putting it into manifestation, ending that thought, and bringing another into existence and doing it hundreds of times over and over and over again. We're not here to have one thought. We're not here to make one thought come to pass. We're here to create world after world after world. Good morning, gardener. We will come back and look at the attribute of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and how it affected and how it brought this gardening about <laughs> and what all took place. How it affects us and how that we have our eyes fixed on Eden now. Fixing our eyes on Eden. Fixing our eyes on the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. Oh, this is sinful. This is this. I can't take this. I've got this burden. I don't know if I can live another. Lay aside all of it and go to the mind of Christ and realize you are here to develop and evolve and bring revolution and come into the earth and make it everything that you ever imagined it to be when you were back there and when you were in spoken word and theophany and all these other civilizations we're in humanity now and we are developing it into our mm -hmm. imagination we are developing it into our way of life fix your eyes on Eden <laughs> <laughs> I hope that helps Very clear. four rivers flowing a, a process flowing back into one and continue through the cycle continually never ending always beginning coming back and back and back and back flowing through the mind of Christ building millions of cycles building millions of relationships and carrying them throughout eternity Amen. Anything? As you were talking, I was thinking about the process and that being a pattern. And then you go into Revelations, 
and Christ brings out further that pattern with the four horse riders, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, how everything is pale takes in all of that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of those four rivers. Also the face of a, um, the lion, ox, face of a man, an eagle, the four angels that held back the winds of the four corners of the earth. Yes. You know, all that was part of that pattern. Oh, wow. Yeah. You see where I'm going? I do see where you're going. <laughs> That's bringing it up to date. His vision over there on high road and the four angels. The four angels. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It, it's and it's all going on concurrently. Yeah. It, it just doesn't stop. Multiple frequencies. All of this is continuing mm -hmm. at one time yes. simultaneously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way up to March 15, 2015, yeah. I think. Four angels came and developed what we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Don Parnell, if you don't move from here, mm -hmm. you're going to die. Many good men come this far. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I made my mind up. <laughs> I want to continue on. I don't want to leave this earth. I want to be a part of this process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I let these four angels, these four processes, these four beings, these four messengers, I let them move me on into the day that we're in. Amen. You know, there's a song that I woke up with the song in my head, and now I see why. <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my mind all morning long. I printed out the chorus, and now I see why. <laughs> this is our tent, our eternal home. This is where we belong. Windows and rooms, we're passing through. This is just a stop. On the way to where we're going I'm not afraid because I know This is our eternal home This is where we belong Windows and rooms We're passing through This is just a stop Just a stop On the way to where we're going This is our eternal home. And following the instructions of our doctors before we hold hands. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want you all to know that I am kind of kidding here. But in a way, I'm not. They told us what to do if we don't want to pass the virus around. Wash your hands before you, you know, do things with one another. And Whatever. I've not <laughs> been saved. <laughs> so we had our our blessing. We bought uh, Patty. You know, one thing about my wife, I got several of those things through the house. I got a closet full of toilet paper. <laughs> She buys that stuff up when she finds it on sale. She don't wait till it's a <laughs> crisis. <laughs> okay. Trusting the spirit that we just looked at, the mind of Christ, to do all things that he said he would do and move us through these cycles, move us through it, give us what we need, pour out the blessings in us while we create our world. In the name of Christ, we say these things. Amen. 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 Don't lick your fingers. It's not a good I flavor. Know, I know. I so, I <laughs> it's a pretty color, but it ain't a great flavor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my God, is she yeah, right back there? She came here and was like, Oh no! She left without me. How can she? <laughs>